So I finally got around to reading Fourth Wing and I wanted to take y'all along to share my reading experience. Obviously this book is so hyped up so I had to see what it was about. It gives such good fall vibes so let's get into this reading vlog. So this book is about dragons. It doesn't necessarily intrigue me but everyone says it's amazing so I'm down to give it a try. People say it gives Hunger Games, it gives Harry Potter, um, so I'm very excited. I'm also in a very fall mood right now. I'm kind of over summer, so I think this is like going to slightly get me in the fall vibes. I just feel like fantasy is like a fall kind of genre. So overall, very excited. Hopes are high. Hopefully we're not disappointed. I am going to start reading. It is currently a Sunday night as we're starting this book. And let's see how far I get with this tonight. I'm holding it like it's a baby. I'm just so excited. Okay, let's go. I'm now on chapter six, which is page 70, and I'm really liking it so far. It is a lot of character names and different parts of the world. Um, you have to like learn all the locations, all the different quadrants and like types of jobs they have and the different leaders. Um, so I am underlining and highlighting in this book, which I don't usually do, but I feel like I needed to pull out the pen to like underline things so I could like go back. I am, I feel like I'm reading it a lot slower because I'm going back to the map and going back to like who certain characters are because that really helps me understand a book when I like go back to the map. It's been about a week and a few days and I'm only on 70. So I really do want to get further into it because I feel like once you get past like, you know, the 100, 100 page mark, you really are into a book. And so I am hoping to get a good chunk done tonight. But overall, been loving it. Kind of a lot of names, but I feel like I can expect that with a pretty long fantasy. And once I know all the names and I know all the, the terms, I get like so invested in a fantasy because it's like its own little world. So I'm excited to keep reading. I just read the first scene between Zayden and Violet. And let me tell you, that really got me hooked. Zayden is giving me very much rain from the serpent in the wings of the night. And I absolutely love rain. So if Zayden's anything like rain, this will be a book for me, let me tell you. But I definitely can tell how Zayden's a little different. Like Zayden is definitely like the unlikable person. He's definitely like the quote unquote villain. But I also love how there's like other people that are Violet's villains. So it's not just Zayden. Um, and so there's just a ton, a ton of depth with like the characters and like who's her, you know, enemy, who's on her side. Um, but the first scene, I'm so excited to keep reading. I'm now on chapter 16. A lot just happened. Like I feel like I really had to get to the 150 page mark and things were really picked up. I've kind of not been in a reading slump again, but 
I don't know, just like picking up books right now for the past few months just hasn't sounded as appealing. I don't want me not being into just like reading in general to spoil my experience of this book because it's not that I'm in a book slump. It never has been a book slump. It's been a reading slump and I actually think those two things are different because um, I really enjoy in this book and the characters and it's super fast paced um, and I feel like I'm really getting to know Violet as a character. She's very like spunky and um, just very like honest with like who she is. She's not afraid to kind of just like be herself and show her personality to everybody that she encounters. And I uh, will update you when I have some more thoughts. <laughs> Welcome to my halfway review. Overall, I have been really, really enjoying Fourth Wing. I'm reading it a little bit slower than I thought I would, but it's not necessarily because of the story. It's just because I'm in a slight reading slump right now. And I'm a strong believer that a reading slump and a book slump is very different. And so I'm not in a book slump because I really like this book, but I'm just not super like into reading right now. I don't like always want to pick this up because I'm just kind of like, just not in a reading mood. So a quick summary of what's been happening. Violet, our main character, was supposed to and kind of has always trained and thought she would end up in the scribe quadrant of their land but she ends up having to go into the writer's quadrant but it's super ruthless super cutthroat like people are dying every day they read the death toll every morning um and violet is like really small and not super strong and she's never trained for the writer's quadrant because her whole life she's been training to be a scribe so she's totally like underdog kind of vibe but then there's been a few little pieces that i'm like ooh, i feel like that might happen and then it happens not necessarily a bad thing but like that never happened to me in Akatar. There was not one moment when I guessed anything that was happening. And I'm really trying not to compare this completely to Akatar. It's definitely giving Divergent. Because in Divergent, you know how there's like the different uh, sectors, I think it's called. So like Divergent, the Amnity, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of like this with the four quadrants, but they definitely work a little bit close together. Um, but definitely the writer quadrant mimics like the divergent quadrant because they're kind of like, you know, the, the warriors are the ones training for, for war. Um, so I'm really liking that. I also really like the love interest that's starting and I am just, ah, it's such a slow burn. And then there's one big kind of overarching plot that is kind of happening and I'm not gonna say what it is because it's kind of a spoiler. But I'm kind of guessing what it is or they're kind of making it obvious what it might be. So either it's going to be that and then it's honestly going to be kind of predictable or they're making it seem like it's the thing that I'm thinking it is and then it's not going to be that at all. I, like I want to keep reading because there's like stuff going on behind the closed doors and I'm very curious to see. Overall really exciting, really good. I'm going to go read now. It's like a Sunday night and I'm just going to like sit on the couch and read as much of this as I can. We're now on page like a 407 at chapter 32. <sighs> the chapter happened. Um, and I just I really do like Violet and Zayden. I really do. I am thoroughly enjoying myself. Such a good story. The only caveat is that I for some reason cannot stop comparing this book to Akatar. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because I'm like missing Akatar right now and I like want to reread it. Fourth Wing is good. Like I love Violet and Zayden. I love the kind of the politics, the world, the slow burn, their relationship, how strong Violet is and how like brooding and just like oof Zayden is. Like I love it. I really do. But for some reason I can't stop like thinking about Akatar. And The Serpent in the Wings of the Night, like my two, the two other fantasies I've read, I like can't stop thinking about them. Okay, okay, wait, 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 me again. Just rewatched that last clip. I think I might know what it is. 
I've only ever read two fantasies in my reading career, Akatar and The Serpent in the Wings of the Night. And those were both five star series for me. So maybe I've literally never read a fantasy that I haven't absolutely five star loved. So maybe what's happening is that this isn't going to be quite a five star for me. And I'm just like feeling a little anxious about it because it's really good. But it's like not giving me that Akatar feeling. And I think I'm starting to realize that. But it's like I want it to be a five star read for me. I really do. But maybe that's what's happening. I don't know. I feel like I need to keep reading to like finalize that, but maybe that's what's happening. to read the last page on camera so you guys can see my live reaction. I was not expecting that. Wait, wait, I have to reread this page. Is the next book out? I don't think it is. <gasps> no! I have to read it right now. What? Okay, that got me. Not gonna lie, there was a lot of things in this book that I predicted. Plot twist at the end. Did not see coming. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna gather my thoughts. I'm going to sleep on these thoughts and then I'll give you my final thoughts tomorrow. It has been quite a while now since the last clip you saw of me. I finished this a few weeks ago and I've been sitting with the rating. Originally, right after the clip you just watched of me finishing it, I was thinking this was totally going to be a five star read for me. However, then I started thinking about like what rating I was going to give it. Is it a five star? And for me personally, if I'm even like considering at all giving it anything but a five star, that's like not a five star read for me. So I settled on a 4.5 for this book. It was so, so good. I loved how the ending really wrapped up like the underlying main plot but at the same time the wrapping up of like the plot of the first book set us up perfectly for the second book. I think the main reason why this wasn't a five star read for me is because the pacing was just like a little bit off and, and I know a long fantasy series needs a certain amount of setup and world building. It really felt like in the beginning nothing was really happening in terms of like the plot it was pretty like slow of Violet just like getting into the war college and and learning all this stuff and like that was necessary. I know we needed to see that, but I just, it wasn't my favorite. And I almost wish it was, there was like a little bit more happening back then in the beginning. Uh, that's, so that's probably the main reason I didn't give it a five, but it was a very, very good. Loved the slow burn, loved the romance. I like when the main character has multiple like close people to them. And it's not just like the romance between her and another person um, or not just her and like her villain or her enemy. There was like a lot of different complex characters around Violet, our main character, which I really, really liked. And I'm excited to see more of them in the second book. I think it's coming out really soon, which is exciting. I also am very, I remember I started this vlog saying like, this is about dragons and I don't really care about dragons. I love dragons now, which is I feel like what everyone says when they read this book. It's, it's a cool, um, element of a fantasy that I have never read before and I feel like the more I'm branching out and reading different fantasies the more I'm discovering that there are like actually 
a lot of different kinds of fantasy. So this was fun to read about dragons. I totally would read another dragon fantasy. So if you guys have any other dragon fantasies that you've read, definitely let me know below because I definitely would want to read more. So that is everything for this fourth wing vlog. Thank you for coming along with me for my first reading vlog ever. And I hope to see you in the next video. I'll see y'all soon. Bye.